Welcome everyone. We are now into the playoffs here for the American Regional Qualifiers for the road to the WEC out in Riyadh for ISF and it's MLBB again. I am nice to joined here with Burger Kim. We're bringing you the action for the first matchup. It's going to be Guatemala, of course, versus Costa Rica. Now, Kim, it's been a couple days. You know, we've yep. seen uh, quite a bit of things so far up to this point, but um, now we're here in the playoffs and I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm I'm sure you are too. How do you feel about uh, things before we look at the schedule for the day? Uh, I feel like time time flies if you're having fun, I guess. I mean, I didn't even yeah. notice it was already the playoffs. Um, looking at these two teams, uh, I was looking at the stats at, over at ISF.gg. Uh, we're talking about two teams that have the same amount of points. So this is a, I would say, crucial first match that we're going to be having for today. And... I don't know like we've been having sweeps yesterday we've had a lot of sweeps so i don't know about today since it's already the playoffs these are some of the top teams that you're talking about yeah it's uh i, I would say overall i think from day one and day two we had did we only have one best of three at least for the streams that mm -hmm. go that went the three games um, yeah the, i can't 100 uh, was, was it was, right? uh, well, argentina and brazil that was 2-1 and yeah, argentina I so. got the match yeah i That's think that was right. you and so, Marco. It was, yeah. So this is the schedule for today. Again, guys, we have games happening off stream. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. were, you know, wanting to see USA versus Mexico. They're at the top of, you know, the group and everything, but that will be happening off stream. Um, we'll be streaming here, Guatemala and Costa Rica. And then we move on to the rest of our matches uh, later on as well. Still happening, you know, with an off stream game, on stream game, Ecuador and the Dominican Republic later on the second match of the day that we'll see here. And then, of course, for the rest of uh, today, it's going to be really on where did things fall in place? Because the I believe our third and fourth match, obviously, are still going to be also yep. um, dependent TBA. on what happens here. Yeah. So for now. But yeah, for Guatemala and Costa Rica, you know, their journey up to this point, they you are correct, Kim. They're pretty much tied in terms of like that middle grounds uh, within the standings for Group A of America's A. And I believe they're both two and two. Um, the yep. way that I look at it too, I think um, it's just like, this is gonna be a good, I feel like this will still be a really good even match. Maybe we get three games out of this. Oh yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, yesterday me and Mirko were saying, wait, are we gonna have like a game number three? But yeah, it was a sweep. And I think um, if the matches are a bit more into the playoffs, uh, we, we can expect to see like uh, a really tight game. I would say BO3s would be totally used up. Like we'll have three games, but I don't know about this one, right? Like uh, Guatemala, Costa Rica, they've had spectacular performances in the past few days. But, you know, going into this, to this day, day number, is that day number three? Day number, day number three, three, yep. Yeah, day number three here today. Um, we can expect to see like uh, the experimental stage is done in the group stage and coming here into the playoffs. I think everybody just has to be, bring in the big guns. They have to, uh, definitely, because again, up next we have Guatemala and Costa Rica. And I think it was, you and I, I think the only glimpse that we got of these two teams, at least on stream, was Costa Rica. And that's mm -hmm. the game you and Mirko casted, I believe. They were. They were up against uh, USA, I think it was on stream. Mm -hmm. um, funnily enough, just because I also remember like one of the one of the player names there from Costa Rica is Moba Stream. Oh yeah, I, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we'll take a look at the the rosters, of course, here in just a second too. And I would say that at least from what has been shown on stream, Costa Rica looks a little more like put together as a team. I would say um, the way that they move, the way that they have drafted, even. And that's not to say, you know, Guatemala hasn't either. It's just we don't have as much information right. from Guatemala, at least on stream, you know, um, because we only get to go have four four games per stream, at least uh, stream for us. So for Guatemala, I think looking at the statistics that they've had, it looks like, I mean, even when it comes to draft, they have their own kind of like unique strategy to this, but they still pick some pretty meta picks. It's just like, how are they going to bring this against a team like Costa Rica? I think that's the main question mm -hmm. here. Yeah, I think for for Guatemala, they they still have to find like their identity because it's a yeah, like what you said, it's it's a really weird weird mix of like meta picks. Sometimes they toss in like a couple of like cheese picks. I, I believe like there was a stream, uh, streamed match uh, for for Guatemala. So going up against Costa Rica, both of them, I think, 
have the same amount of like uh, you know players, even the, the coach yeah. and analysts. Uh, you also have it for for both teams. So uh, I think it's gonna be again a very tight matter matchup. Uh, looking at the scores, it is uh, pretty much even out. So uh, for for these two teams, let's take a look at Guatemala Vulture Cholo ninety seven Zate Sub and Selby. B. I was talking wow, to Rico about this. Wow, that is some small this. text. Yeah, I, I was telling Mirko, this feels like some, uh, you know, the eye test. Like, oh, can you read yeah, the last one? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. I was going to say, I had to, like, blink a couple times to, to see Sally B. Mm-hmm. Sally B, um, Mr. Kevin Reyes of uh, Guatemala. But I, I believe um, this team is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they prio they prior the Julian if I'm not mistaken yeah. like, for, for the past few matches that has been a prior for this team maybe that's something that uh, Costa Rica has to consider especially in the drafting phase or maybe perhaps uh, bring out something new here for Guatemala I mean that was the group stage that we were talking about this is the playoffs already so everybody is just struggling or rather kind of like thinking to keep their spot uh, up here in the ISF uh, American Regional Qualifiers yeah, and I think, uh, you know, at this point, uh, just so that we have a note, too, for our viewers that are going to be tuning in, you guys can look at the standings. Um, I know a lot of people check out a couple different websites to keep up to date with all this, uh, Liquipedia being one of them. But mm -hmm. if you want the real-time updates, isf.gg is where you guys can go ahead and take a look. Of course, we have all the results, the standings, even from the games happening off stream. I think it takes a little bit longer for Liquipedia to go ahead and update. So if you want that real-time information definitely check out isf.gg and you know in just a second too we'll be looking at costa rica's lineup and at the same time it's like um i believe america's b because there's only three three teams in that group it looks like argentina is the one that mm -hmm. secured that spot you know going to the wbc so this is also for us to like figure out because there's two teams that will qualify from america's a so that's what everyone here at least today is really uh, gunning for, they're shooting for that first mm -hmm. and second position to get to to Rion later this year. And, you know, I think even for, for Guatemala, any team right now seems to be doing really well with the Julian. When we get to eventually, when we get to the, the first draft and we get to go through this and all, I think um, you already see these patterns kind of building up. But so far, aside from the, and I don't know, you probably saw the clips already for this, Kim probably saw what United mm -hmm. States did yesterday. Oh, you know, yeah. I think there was uh, yep. the Clippers were happy about that. <laughs> There's a five man retribution lineup and then there was a five man arrival. Arrival. Lineup. Wow. Talk I'm not about... sure if. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to happen today, though. Oh, definitely not. Like group stage, that is the best time to actually put those things out. But here, I don't think it's going to work out because we're talking about the teams that are in the upper half of the list. Let's take a look at Costa Rica here as well. Forsaken Danny, Z Zirael, you got Boba Stream. You got Gabo, mm -hmm. Gabo Robo and Hoop. Oh. So uh, I think me, me and Mirko were talking about this. We're like, okay, there's MOBA Stream and you got a Hoop here instead of Spoon. So pretty uh, pretty similar IGNs, but uh, this is a different yeah. team that we're talking about. Costa Rica. Uh, I think based on uh, what I've seen from them, they really love to go for, uh, you know, chain CCs, um, layer, uh, good layering of combos because... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the last time uh, that they were on stream, they picked up uh, like three heroes that can set up, like Carmilla, uh, a Tigreal, and the Terizla. So, but the only problem was, again, the timing and um, I guess communication coming out from the team. Communication, it, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, I was really expecting a lot of team fights, but you know, it didn't really work out since it was a, let's say, one-sided match, if I'm not mistaken, up against the United States. So it was a really tough match, but you know, they made it here again. Both Costa Rica and Guatemala, they are at par right now in terms of the points. And there's going to be two slots, like what you mentioned, Naisu, uh, for these teams that will head over to WEC by the end of this year. Yeah, for, for Costa Rica, again, looking at the statistics here, you know, some of the games that were on stream, it looks like they, you know, for the most part, they do have these meta compositions like... The Roger seems to be a favorite for one. So depending on how we go through that draft, um, of course they did. I, I they also brought up the Lunox um, that they had the chip, you know, the Tigreal, like some of these key hero picks that do come up. Costa Rica has gone that way. The other side though is like, um, you know, the other matchup happening off stream right now between USA and Mexico. I believe they got swept by both of them, um, and that's just you know. 
USA, from what I've heard too, from the players, they were really looking forward to playing against Mexico. So um, we'll see what happens there. But I think, you know, with what Costa Rica went through against those two teams, that could be a huge, just valuable lesson. You know what I mean? Like a big learning experience that they got uh, that they got to have with these teams that obviously have a lot of practice, experience, synergy with each other and uh, so forth. So we'll see if Costa Rica or Guatemala Guatemala has been able to go ahead and take what's happened in the past couple of days and then adjust for this playoff, you know, for this first playoff match pretty much because you know it kind of comes up it com comes down to this because at the end at the end of this the these first round of matches either Mexico or United States is going to have a loss under their belt, right? Oh, yeah. Cuz right now they're standing undefeated, they're 4-0 I believe. Um, and so for either of these two teams, this could potentially help them in the long run where they get to bump up to possibly that second spot, you know, and depending on how things go, of course. So for Team Costa Rica, um, we'll see here uh, exactly what they want to do. Guatemala, on the other hand, I think so far from what we've seen from these teams that I would say don't necessarily have as much experience as some of the, you know, the the more known teams yep. is the best way to put it. It's like, uh, you know, how much have they learned from the past couple days here and what do they bring with a little special flavor of their own? I think Guatemala is going to be one of those teams that does that based off the picks that we can at least see here uh, from uh, their previous yeah. games. Yeah, ISF.gg, guys. And, you know, if you guys uh, want to have uh, a bit more detailed um, updates as well, you got Liquipedia. But then again, um, it's more updated over at the ISF.gg website. So you guys can check it out. I'm looking at these two teams. I, I think, you know, having these qualifiers, uh, both in Europe, all across the world, is it's good for the ecosystem of MLBB. Like, you get to yeah. have that experience. It's not like you get these major tournaments every single time. And for some of the developing countries, or people who would really love to make it to the world stage or maybe even some of these like B or A tier tournaments this is probably the best way to go and you know even us as casters nice it's not like you know you, you come in here you you, you be the best like it, it, it really needs some time and I think for these teams um, you know take it as an experience if you know you don't make it that far but as for the teams that do make it far then you know just just give it all you got I mean you were talking yeah. about uh, Mexico the Mexico Riyadh uh, yeah, I'm actually surprised that Mexico is at par with the United States. Like, wow, I'm, I'm checking the stats here. Like, no losses at all. So that is actually very impressive. And I'm looking forward to that as well. Like, U.S. versus Mexico. And everybody here over at the stream is looking forward to that as well. Like, I see a lot of the comments, even in the previous days, that they are looking forward to that matchup. And we might just see it, of course, here in the uh, playoffs of the America's qualifiers. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we get a chance to um, eventually, again, we don't, really know how things are going to fall into place uh you know for the rest of today and then of course our last day is still tomorrow where mm -hmm. you know i think you and another castle will be covering some oh, yeah. of the america's women's uh league games and then we'll have our last two of course tomorrow um depending on to decide on who gets that first and second match but i guess while we wait for the draft here kim i'll ask you this out of all the games we've seen so far in the american regional qualifiers mm -hmm. i know it's been you know two days yep is there a certain team i know you already mentioned mexico but other than mexico that you kind of had your eye on or you were impressed by um maybe even one of the teams that necessarily isn't as big as some of the others like i mentioned was there any specific team or a country that really stuck out to you here Ooh, i think colombia like uh, colombia. colombia yeah i would say they have a good understanding of of the game and you know it's, it's not bad yeah, very, very, very good. Abyss, Abyss Cutie, even the names like mm -hmm. really stuck to me. They, they also have like a variety of drafts that they bring out. So I think I was, I was pretty impressed with you know what they've showcased so far, and I think that also kind of like mirrors like what's gonna happen also in the the women's. You know, just to give a little glimpse to everybody uh, on what's gonna happen tomorrow with me, and of course another caster which you guys will see tomorrow. Um, you know, it is very similar i would say the play style like me and arashi talked about this in the european qualifiers like um say the male mlbb team is actually pretty good like you can kind yeah. of see that as well in the women's team it kind of mirrors so I, I don't know like we can sort of get a glimpse of what the what mlbb like is in certain countries so i don't know like hopefully whoever comes up on top i think you know based on the stats 
USA, Mexico, we might see like their women teams tomorrow, maybe mm. stand out or perhaps like maybe go into WEC this year. I think, uh, you know, for for the women's anyway, I think if you, well, I don't know, I bet I, I haven't seen all the rosters, but looking at this, definitely the most notable would be from America's B, that's Brazil. Uh, they're from, you know, the Dream Max girls. They actually just recently competed in a major tournament. So maybe they take some of that, uh, some of that information they got from that and, and bring it here uh, tomorrow, I guess. We'll see if they're able to do that. But, you know, to, to go and get to this point where we're finishing up things here, especially for the men's, it's down to the last couple of days. And then, you know, the American regional qualifiers are done. The next thing that we have uh, for this whole, you know, road to Riyadh basically is eventually the offline event for for the African qualifier or the mm -hmm. African championship, I should say, mm -hmm. um, is that. And then, you know, eventually all these teams will get to go ahead and, and meet up in Riyadh. And I think, I don't know, by that time, Kim, it's like we could be in a whole different patch, a whole different map. Oh, yeah. So everything that we're seeing like right now. I'm Still waters run deep. Your team is so I don't know how that'll yeah. affect things, right? Um, uh, but yeah. we're jumping to the draft here. Game number one for this match one. Playoffs day number one here for the American Regional Qualifiers. We got Guatemala here on the blue side. And of course, Costa Rica here on the red. Already taken out the Trizla, the Ling. Uh, so far, I would say it's it's standard bands, mm -hmm. you know, that we've seen are the Trizlas, the Assassins, no like the Lings. The Jushins uh, have been constantly banned out. Haibusa even here and there. And then, um, but I would say if the Jushin goes through, I could see Guatemala actually taking it first pick. Okay, it's going to be banned out. It's banned out. Uh, I was going to say, like, maybe perhaps the Julian uh, will be taken yeah. in here by Guatemala or even the Roger. Honestly, like, even in rank games, I, I've checked, like, Roger is the top pick. From, Roger's the uh, guy. Yeah. Or the wolf, I should say. Yeah, the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's on top of the list when it comes to, like, picks, uh, bans, even, like, it's like four point something so that's really really high usually you'd see um heroes that that go in that with that number are either you know assassins but roger is on top uh, the assassins are at least on the top five but wow very targeted bands here for guatemala we've seen a lot of ruby for the past few days and yeah, it's not the usual ruby that you guys see uh, especially in southeast asia there's a lot of like rubies that are more on the roam position uh but here in the americas it's mostly um, gold, a gold lane ruby. Picking. So now yeah. Costa Rica uh, prior bans on the assassins, which leaves the Roger and the Julian here. Depends on what Guatemala wants to go for. I would say a very safe, uh, a safer choice would actually be a Roger. But you know, if they want to go snowball, they want to go for comfort based on what they've picked out in the group stage. They can go for the Julian. Julian open. I think. I don't know. I think it, their safest bet's Roger. I agree with you on mm -hmm. on, on that. Um, you know the Roger brain. because you can still flex Your it. There it is, picking. locked in right away. And this is mainly just because, yeah, you get the option of being able to flex that, whether it goes in the jungle, whether it goes in the gold lane. Um, and for Costa Rica, you know, you still have quality picks here left for them. They have in the past picked up, you know, of course, they prioritize Roger. That's not there. The Terizla's banned for a reason because that was a good quality pick for them that they brought in the first day. And I so it's like, all right, Valentina is still open too. Yep. They're going to go the Arlot though, at least for now. We'll see. I, I still think Arlot's pretty flexible too. Like, yeah. I don't know. Pretty he flex. still works in the XP. He still works in the Rome. Yes. If you actually wanted to put him there. Mm -hmm. there and is, there's a Julian. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. This is probably one of the highest win rates. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, I think so, but you know, for, for Guatemala didn't really you know didn't really have that much of a success. But for, for Costa Rica here, it's uh I would say their first two picks is a great way to engage. Instant engage coming up from the final slash and then you got the enhanced chains from the Julian. Um I would say at par if, with the Roger as well, you know, if you're you're talking about a yeah. Roger jungle. Um very fast clearing on the uh the the jungle creeps and I think it can go head to head with this Roger. Now Guatemala needs somebody who can also engage. Um, usually like the Minotaur gets picked up like in, in this phase. Like if you're gonna want to go for CC, perhaps go for an XP laner pick as well. It seems to be a prio apart from uh, the jungle picks that is usually the case. And without the Teresa, I think uh, it perhaps for something different here this time. The High Loss and the Benedetta. So this still is a, a huge question mark for me nicely because 
it can be an a high loss that is in the XP lane and the Benedetta in the jungle. That that's what I'm seeing here. Super flex picks coming out from Guatemala. Yeah, this the, the timer got down to the wire there, so I'm wondering if this you know how this plan's gonna work for them. We've seen high loss a couple times, a handful of times mm -hmm. actually. Uh, throughout the American regional qualifiers, and it's worked for some teams and other teams it hasn't. Typically, we've seen it in two ways. Obviously, the most the most common way is revitalize. You 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 know you're doing the typical uh, tank things with the high loss, but we also saw a high loss pick up a retribution and just to oh, the, uh, the heal. harassment into the jungle. Wow, Tigreal. Okay, yeah, Tigreal gets picked up. Uh, Costa Rica's lineup right now very solid. Already good covered of magic damage, and then of course you got a great set. Uh, set potential with the Tigreal, but not only that, then they have the final slash. So, um, if you're Guatemala, you want to start banning out some of these possible gold lane options. Mm -hmm. And with that, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure if Costa Rica actually wants to pick up a Harith and put it in the gold lane. Uh, they might stick with a traditional um, yeah. marksman pick here. Moskov? But we'll see because maybe the Moscow, maybe a Claude. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see what they end up doing. Yeah, I, I think the Moskov would be good. Uh, I would say it has great way to defend itself. Uh, the Brody, I actually want to see, but we've never seen it in the uh, American Regional Qualifiers. I think it's a very underrated marksman. But I think this is based on the preference of the region. Uh, you have certain metas per region. And I think uh, we've seen variety of it, like Southeast Asia, Europe, and now here into the Americas. It's more of the, the Roger Harriet matchup. Sometimes you see uncontemporary matches as well in the gold lane, the Ruby up against the, the Roger. So Harriet, I'm not so sure. Now Guatemala's taking out the Claude, perhaps maybe even more marksman bands, or maybe even, you know, the Zask, by the way, that some teams have utilized in the gold lane. Lane Bully can poke, yeah. uh, has survivability, something that Costa Rica can consider, but that's going to be a lot of magic damage, though, if uh, they're going to go with that. But now, mid lane bands are coming through again, which leaves the option for, hmm, thinking something along the lines of, like, you know, Savior, perhaps, or, you know, usually... Some those long the, range. Yeah. These last bands, though, I think, yeah, mid... <laughs> What is this? What is this going to be? Faramis? Okay. <laughs> Faramis is what they're going to ban out. To live um, is to trick both teams not having the mid lane mid lane destroy. locked in. Just There's a Zask. Right? I was going to say, Zask has been a... I'm actually surprised Zask went through the first phase not being picked up because typically he is prioritized, um, but both teams opting for, you know, different choices, which are still great picks. Like I said, the Julian especially, the Roger, was just also a safe one. Um, but now I'm wondering, do you pick up your gold lane here? This is where we see if they go the Harith route because Harith is still open. Or do they pick up, like, for example, the Moskov, like we mentioned? Moskov, and we've seen a lot of Clint. Okay. Okay. Lunox. Go to Lunox. Interesting. Still... Uh, they picked this up. They picked this up in their game against Guadalupe, uh, day one. And that was a 10 minute game, mind you. So this is, this is, they're going with something similar here. Yeah, uh, the, the Lunox as well, I think uh, it has similar capabilities as the Zask and the um, the Lilia. You have like the Order of Brilliance that just kind of get out of any sticky situation. And looking at Guatemala here, you have heroes that can die for their first three picks. They need to have somebody who can clear the waves uh, in the mid lane as fast as the Akai Lunox, I would say. The um, they pick up the Akai here and maybe perhaps I would say Lilia is, is a, a good mage that can... Um, survive like uh, all of these CCs coming out from Costa Rica I'm not so sure if they're familiar with it Honeymoon has been picking up the Valentina but they lock in the Candida so I'm not so sure how this will be pulled off by Guatemala I'd rather still go for yeah I would still rather go for somebody who has more AOE the Candida is more of like okay bursting a single target but Seems like uh, it's not going to be easy to do that like, up against Costa Rica's lineup. But let's see. Might be a comfort. Might be a pocket pick. Costa Rica, they still need a gold laner. Not unless this Lunox is going to go mid lane. Maybe shake the lineup a little bit. Like put the Julian in, in mid. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, might be a jungle Julian. Mid Lunox. Very standard if they pick up a marksman here for the last pick. Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, there's still actually some flex to it. You know, you could... Um... Depending on how they want to go out. Because, yeah, typically Lunox has also gone to the gold lane. But maybe they just go that traditional route, especially knowing that it's going to be the Roger they're going against. So, for oh, uh, Clint, I, I was actually going to mention, I'm not, I can't recall if I mentioned it, but Clint has been a 
almost popped up more for the American regional qualifiers than uh, some of the other gold laners that come up. You know, I know Klon was banned here, um, but it seems like this, you know, part of the world actually really likes the clay yeah. pick. <laughs> uh, so they went with that. So very, I would say, well-rounded lineup from Costa Rica. For Guatemala, I'm not so sure about this lineup here. A Benedetta with a Kadida mm -hmm. and, and a Kai and a Hylos. And then, like, Roger is really the most standard thing here. Even a Kai, to to, an, to a sense now for the current meta, is somewhat niche for certain teams to make it work. Um, obviously, you get good utility with a heavy spin being locked down. And if you're trying to, you know, prioritize just getting objectives and whatnot. But... I don't know, maybe this is something up their sleeve where they're like, yeah, we can just go ahead and get the pickoffs. Uh, they could burst down a Clint very easily and maybe a Julian. The rest, I don't think you're going to be bursting uh, anyone down early on, at least. So for Guatemala, they definitely have to scale up and get the items yeah. that they need uh, to get that numbers advantage uh, once wow. they get to the game. Yeah, I think the Clint is, uh, I would say, really popular in this side of the world. Uh, yeah, not it seems just like here. It. Even in Europe, I've seen this pop up a lot in the in the group stage, at least. Like I've seen this pop up, like kind of like making me and Arashi raise our eyebrows. Like, where's this gonna? Like, is this a pocket pick? Uh, it actually didn't really have that much of a success rate. But you know, picking up, uh, picking it up, actually here for this uh, playoff stage for Costa Rica. Not so sure if this is gonna be a game changer. They they did last pick this hero so i think uh you know last picking a hero is something that okay you kind of saved it for last maybe it's something that you kind of have to think it through if it's going to fit your composition right now nicely we're going to go into the land of dawn here guatemala versus costa rica again for a bo3 here in our playoffs playoffs num day number one uh meanwhile we have a match going on like we said off stream between usa and mexico and for this one we'll see what happens here for Guatemala and Costa Rica, both pretty much in the middle of the standings in their group. Mm -hmm. So pretty standard things. I, I Looking at the emblems as well, I know there's some poking here. Honeymoon's getting quite low. I actually think he's going to be chased down a little bit further, but no, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You have actually some pretty good utility here from Guatemala. Looks like he went vengeance for Zayt on this Hylos uh, because it is an XP lane. Yep. Yeah, so it's a gold lane Benedetta. Mm -hmm. An Up XP against Clint. lane Hylos. Yeah, very interesting. Um, and yeah, the Roger, because, you know, at the at, in the top of my head, I was even thinking, well, is the Akai going in the jungle? But it's actually an Akai of Rome. Rome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I mean, this so is this something... is a whole different way. Yeah, I think this is something that the Smart Omega oh. has picked up. But for Taken Daddy, though, going to get chased here by Cholo. And he's going to draw in the first blood for the side of Guatemala here. Great way to engage here for, for Guatemala, knowing that their pick's a bit uncontemporary. Akai, I've only seen this uh, from Smart Omega's Mirai. Um, I think it's either an answer to like the Clid or per perhaps the Julian with the uh, heavy spin. But right now, Guatemala, after that first pickoff, Cholo97 might actually go in for the engage as well here. Over on the top side, Glorious Padway is here, Mobile Stream. Gonna try to go in for something, but level 4 is not just there yet as Zireal. Gonna try to go in for the Order of Brilliance. Level <laughs> 4 is not there just yet, and Zayt able to survive with 1 HP. Lin, Retribution was used there to escape, so this means that Guatemala can go straight for this turtle. Okay, Guatemala, take this unorthodox lineup and make it work <laughs> because you know, three kills this early on, and I think they're just going to go ahead and get this free yep. turtle, too. So Cholo is able to get that. Oh, Danny could be in trouble. Mm -hmm. He's getting uh, the combo up here, but not uh, using the heavy spin just yet. Looking at this nice, it's actually a vengeance high loss, not a revitalized high loss. So it's kind of like yeah. reflecting the damage. So I think it's an additional... Uh, you know, an additional tanky hero here for the side of Guatemala. We haven't seen any of these uh, setups just yet from Forsaken Danny. I think he's also timing it as well when, you know, you have like four, three or four players. But so far, Guatemala has been in charge of the first few minutes of the game. Three kills and, of course, the turtle to take in. Yeah, and I'm wondering how, like, to what extent this lineup from Guatemala is going to be able to work. You know, so far, because they've gotten this lead, they actually have quite a bit of threat and damage now. So mm -hmm. what I said about Kadita earlier on, they're in a much better position because of the lead they have now. Plus, those early kills. Oh, nope. yeah, let go find a blow here by Daddy. Implosion on the three members, but misses Danny? here. Last hit 
taken in here by Honeymoon and now Lin as well gonna go in for some combos here as Lin gonna be forced to dash away as Cholo picks up that killing spree. Three members down, Order of Brilliance up here as well from Ziriel, but they're not gonna go for more. They did punish one member here which was Honeymoon, picked up a double. Let's take a look at the items here, 2,700 gold for the Rogers, starting it up with the uh, Wind Talker here, not even going for the boots. Yeah, I, so like, this is uh, going back to what we were saying earlier too, the fact that Cholo now has uh, this this many kills early on is already great too. We know that Roger scales really well in the jungle and originally thinking that it would go in the gold lane, but it, it ends up being flexed and that was the power play in the draft, mm -hmm. you know, the reason why they picked it up first uh, on that blue side. It's showing here and so now you're, you got Two, oh, implosion yep. gonna be used, okay. Danny. Yep, two separate uh, setups there. Sub gonna try to go in for something, but does <laughs> not commit to the heavy spin. I think it was just kind of like, okay, yep, we're just gonna create some pressure here into gold, but actually, it's a lot of uh, gold plating taken down there by the side of uh, Guatemala. Order of Brilliance has been popped pretty early. Sub gonna try to go in for Danny here as Lin popping Fire in the enhanced chain, and they're fighting for the turtle. Sub is gonna be able to get it. Look at the glorious pathway, Ale! Able to free hit everyone, but it is going to be a double kill picked up here by the Benedetta. Cholo as well, going in for the double kill and wipe out for the side of Costa Rica and straight for the turtle here for Guatemala. <laughs> Let Guatemala cook with this lineup because that was beautiful. The glorious pathway slowing down Costa Rica and then the Electo final blow with the Petrify combination from Rios Mont was just absolutely beautiful with the setup there. And I think this already just gives them that hyper scaling that they were looking for, the momentum. And it's gonna be tough to stop. Like Costa Rica really has to look adjust from this. Mm -hmm. Rough wave's gonna be used, but I think, yeah, he's gonna be just fine. Okay. Halfway down for a little safety, but yeah, that's the thing. You get this kind of lead and it, the snowball effect is already happening here for Guatemala. So for Costa Rica, if they can slow things down a little bit, farm up, then they will be able to catch up here. And I think that's the thing, is just really uh, not getting too overextended mm -hmm. in any of these lanes around the map. They might even possibly give up the next turtle. They don't really need, you know, we've seen teams do that before, where all three turtles go to the opposing team and they get kind of prepared for the Lord fights, the Lord tangos, if you will. Um, but for right now, they're just kind of outgunned. You know, Costa Rica doesn't really have the items that they need just yet to, to withstand what we just saw with that setup. Because we're talking, again, this is what, two petrifies that they have to work against mm -hmm. too. So you can already see how this is kind of falling into place. Guatemala too, just such a threat in the damage alone. Yeah, I mean, the, the Roger here is just completely broken right now. Even though there were adjustments and nerfs that were made, it's still very, very much viable. Uh, flex pick uh, for, for a lot of the teams. And now it seems like Guatemala, with this lineup, Forsaken Danny, cool. gonna try to go in for the setup and gets bursted down here by Rios Mons. Benedetta, that was too petrified, like what you mentioned. That gets yep. used on the tank, and sometimes this is the case. Like, you don't let the tank play. Like, Forsaken Danny is the one that has the assignment. Okay, you have to get an implosion onto, like, at least three members, two members it, to set up the team fight. But how can he? Because all of these skills are being tossed onto him. Again, when your tank gets blown up like that, that is not a good sign. And that's why I was saying, you know, itemization wise, Guatemala is feeling pretty good. They're feeling very confident with the lead they have. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you really want to get in this area. Oh. Danny goes in. Yep, he's going in for the implosion. The turtle's going to be stolen here by Costa Rica. Cholo's 97, going to be in trouble there. Going to be able to dash away as Zate. Zoning everybody away with the high loss. And honestly, this is not even a revitalized high loss. Just goes in. And every time I see the glorious pathway, I'm just like, oh, there, there it is. The uh, highway to, oh. <laughs> to death. They still go for more here. As Forsaken Danny again taken down real low. Heavy spin used to dash away from the team fight from sub. So there's just a lot of ways to engage. Whereas uh, Costa Rica, we are kind of expecting the setups to be made here by Forsaken Danny, which he has been doing. Most of the time gets bursted down and mobile streams like Final Slash. We haven't seen any of that just yet because the map so far, it's going to the side of Costa Rica, obviously, because of all of the uh, turrets that they've taken, as well as uh, the turtles that have spawned in the land of Dawn. Yeah, this is interesting, too, because Ale has the Blade of Hepsises and the Endless Battle. 
And I'm noticing, you know, his damage is starting to, to be there. It's starting to get online here. They need some more time, mm -hmm. of course. You're seeing it, you know, he yep. is going to be top in the damage meter on the team. Mm -hmm. Actually, overall, too. And even yeah. with this, they've been holding down this mid lane pretty well. It's just that's the thing, you know, they're, they're just kind of outscaled right now. And if, if they get some more minutes on their on their side, if they can withstand oh. a lot of this, you see what I mean? Like the damage yeah. is respectable already. And a genius one also picked up here by Zirael. So now Costa Rica still, you know, farming up what they can. I think, though, if they force a situation where they try to fight toe to toe the Lord, it might not go well. So if they can get a pick off somehow or at least at the very least here, avoid the Electo Final Blow Petrify yep. combination. And if Ale stays alive, they, they have a chance in dealing with this kind of power spike and this momentum that, that Guatemala has got themselves, you know, the past 10 minutes pretty much. Because Lord's coming up now, so you're a few seconds away from that coming up. They're going to go ahead and have this reset and get the buffs that they need. But this could just overall be a free objective for Guatemala. Oh, yeah. They go ahead and start it up. Costa Rica yep. getting the buffs still for Lin. Mm -hmm. Again, they could pull something off. Just got to avoid yep. Rios Mont. That setup potential. Maybe to utilize the implosion. Oh, the yep. flicker too. There's the conceal. Yep. Forsaken Danny going to try to go in for Lin. Oh, man. That was Lin bursted down instantly by Rios and Honeymoon. And now we see Forsaken Danny. Maybe the target here. Petrify oh. through and the shutdown comes through for Rios Mont. It's a killing spree for Zirial. Astrolo 97 again. Picking up the kills here and there. It's going to be two for the price of one here for the side of Guatemala. And they go straight for this Lord. Not unless, you know, Forsaken Daddy again tries to go for something here. But Sub, he's just zoning everybody out. I don't think there's any way in here. They're just going to have to give this to Guatemala. It's going to be hard to kind of do that Lord Tango, what you like what you mentioned, uh, with the numbers advantage going to the side of Guatemala. Yeah, it was a good attempt, but, you know, Lin getting blown up and blasted like that, you know, that's pretty much going to be an objective in your hands for Guatemala. And it was good patience. A lot of that, again, the combination between this Benedetta and the Kadita, the double petrify. It's just too much burst at this point to really deal with for Costa Rica until some of those defensive items come into play. But obviously, like, Lin is just building for damage, too. You know, like, Lin's job is just pretty much to get someone in the air, hopefully with the chains and then uh, maybe even just work with the Genius yeah. Wand synergy that was built earlier on from Zeriel. So you can see them holding down as much as they can, farming what they can here. Some of these items still need to fall in place for Costa Rica. They're down four or five-ish thousand gold and a Lord making its way top too. They should be able to defend relatively okay for now, unless once again, Guatemala mm -hmm. gets some uh, setup, some pickoff. There's no Petrify here. It looks like it was already used by Rios yep. Mont. So it's Honeymoon that has it. Pathway's oh, no. gonna drop. Yep, Zayt again going in for the Glorious Pathway. Just to zone everybody out so they can get that second tier. And now the Lord is marching up top as the rest of the members here of Guatemala. They're gonna take in what they can here. Second tier towers should be gone here, at least like the mid one. Not so sure if Forsaken Danny will go in for some play here, but they are actually going in, tanking up the damage just to take down Tier 2 as Rios Mont making the lanes work here on the bottom side. 37,000 here for Guatemala and a 32k for, for Costa Rica. And I think uh, Guatemala, they're just you know doing the best that they can. Forsaken Danny again, four deaths here. He's been uh, doing a lot of these implosions. And I think what's really important here for Costa Rica is as long as Ale and Zirial are alive in the team fights. You can see the damage already coming through, especially for Ale. Like you've seen like one or two hits coming out from from the basic attacks. It was already enough to chunk down Honeymoon to like half HP. Yeah, this might be like, and I don't want to put this all on Forsaken Danny. It's also on MOBA stream as well. Oh, there's the oh, implosion. Speaking whoa! of. Whoa, there's a shutdown. Petrify actually coming through here for MOBA stream to pick up that crucial, you know, uh, oh, uh, backside. Oh no. Yep, that's going to be the burst. And now we see as well Sub going to try to go in for the heavy spin. Onto Lin dashes out to safety with just a few HP left. They did get the pickoffs that they want. Uh, shut down on Cholo. Uh, pick off as well onto Zirial. And I think uh, Guatemala, they just have to keep on doing this, right? And the power spike here for, for Costa Rica is is about to, to come in. 13 minutes into the game, we see L picking up uh, all these uh, items that dish out of damage. And... You know, earlier on, like a few minutes ago, he's already dishing out like 23, way more than Cholo 97. So 
I think there's a potential here for Costa Rica to have the comeback, but they have to execute well uh, when it comes to, to the team fights. Moba Stream, Forsaken Danny, they're the ones that have to be in front here, and I think they might actually contest for this Ooh. next Lord. Look at the damage coming out from Ail! Oh. Oh, Honeymoon isn't even able to move forward, and now Zayn as well! Forced to use that vengeance, but the damage from the backside from the clear is just way too much. A lot of hefty price to pay for the Lord. Two members down, but it's gonna be Guatemala taking that in. Flicker out from sub as Guatemala forced to go away. Mobile stream. Is he gonna try to make a play here? But they got what they wanted here. Lord gonna march up top. And Costa Rica, if you know they they made a good play, but they were a little bit too late to the Lord. So they'll go ahead and grab a turret. Trollo waiting patiently. They still have to deal with the Lord actually on top as well. But you can see it. They are, even despite being down, what, five to 6,000 gold earlier, yep. the damage is online. So right now, Guatemala, despite the lead that they had, the, the answer has to be, how do we get to Ale? Yep. And they have great tools for that. This, this lineup should be able to get to the back line very quickly, very easily, whether that's the Benedetta, whether that's the Kadita, or even just slowing them down with the Glorious Pathway alone is actually going to be very valuable for Guatemala to deal with. So they dealt with the Lord. Costa Rica is going to be fine. Holding on still to the base turrets. They're going to clear these powered up waves, of course. But still, ultimately, they found some breathing room. That's pretty much what they did. It's still going to be activated, but I don't think we're going to get anything out of that unless Danny tries to make a play. He does have Immortality. Uh, not the Immortality, the, the Flicker. So... Mm -hmm. If he uses that, again, it's going to be a very, I feel like a confident showing because Danny's dealt with a lot so far oh, yeah. in this game. And he's like, you know, now's my time to shine. It's it's that point of the game where they have the, the firepower to do so. And he's actually got a couple defensive items now where he can actually just go for that setup. Mm -hmm. But that's why you see they have to work out through how many immortalities from Guatemala here. You know, there's oh, multiple yeah. online um, and a lot of information is just being given by yeah. sub alone on the Sakai. Yeah, I think uh, what what the Guatemala is uh, doing right now, they sense the urgency. I mean, you can see the damage already coming through here for, for Ale. And even, you know, the tankiest members here from Guatemala, Zayt, as well as Sub, is already feeling the damage coming out from the Clint as well as the Lunox. And, and I think this is where the problem comes in. They have to keep on doing this, at least get in the inhibitors here for the next Lord. But I think for Costa Rica, they're a bit more confident this time, knowing that they have all the items that they need. I believe some of them are going to at least like the, the fifth or the sixth item already uh, for this game. But they're going to have to, you know, work around or kind of take down the immortalities here for, for the side of Guatemala. That's Cholo97. Sub, I'm not sure if Zayt has it, but you know, they, they're doing a great way. Uh, wave clear here right before the Lord takes so that Costa Rica can't move forward. But I think they will contest this. Look at the damage dealt here by Ale 55,000. That is a whole lot more than what Guatemala yeah. has. Like, combined, like, That's why two they or like three that members. Clint. Mm -hmm. I think they're waiting for this moment, right? 17 minutes. This should be. Um, go time already for the Clint. It already has the damage. I think it's just a matter of setting things up here. As you can see, Boba Stream as well as Danny. Conceal has been made here. Gonna get spotted out here by Sub. Is he gonna go for the implosion? Glorious oh. Padme has been made here as well, zoning everybody away. Danny go for the implosion out to the back side. They're trying to make a play. Look at the damage from Ale! Order of Brilliance being popped here, but the oh. Petrify comes through from Rios Mont. Ale's gonna get taken down. A double kill for the Benedetta. Lin goes down as well as Moba Stream. Getting taken That's down it. by the Lycan Pals. Triple kill for Rios Mont. I think this is it. They don't even need the Lord. They can end it. Down bot here. Ooh, Clear out the minion. Wow. Let's just go for the straight push here. I don't think there's going to be any time for Costa Rica to spawn back in as Guatemala finally takes in this game. Wow, wow, wow. Guatemala with the lineup like this. Yep. Leaving everyone guessing on exactly where they would go with it. Especially when that Roger was locked in right away. But what a team effort here. And I got to say, too, it was it was the, just the power of having that Benedetta, having that Kadita, you know, and I was thinking, like, who would they even pick off back in the draft? But they made it work together. Once that Benedetta was there, once that Kadita was actually together, part of that was just, well, we have two insurances between our two Petrifies. 
and the electo final blow and the rough waves and they made it work even at the end you know we were already talking about the damage potential with um ale having that clint there but you know if you get if you're caught in a team fight and you have to avoid both of those ultimates you know both of those ultimates between uh the benedetta and the katina you know how how much do you, how much defensive do you have you only have one flicker and then the bullet to push you back that's about it you know and so this was a really good just i guess synergy that you could say from coming out from guatemala and it's great to see because this is a lineup that's not it's not yeah. a usual lineup let's just be let's just be real this is not a usual lineup that you see from guatemala but dang did they make it work and you know at first too when we were in the draft i was thinking man hylos and benedetta yeah in the first phase what's going on but like that look at that from the highlights yeah. that worked out so well in in conjunction with each other a glorious pathway to slow down the enemies and then to use the electo final blow to petrify within it was yeah. brilliant here it worked yeah. out so well and they do it so many times throughout the game here yeah i, I think this is the, the point where like costa rica's like i can't move <laughs> i can't move yeah, can't but all move. these oh, at all i mean you have to do with the glorious pathway you have to deal with the Electro Final Blow, and not to mention the Petrifies too. So there's really nothing much you can do. There were some setup attempts uh, as well from Forsaken Danny and Mobile Stream. They did get uh, some shutdowns uh, all throughout the game, but uh, you know uh, there was a ticking time bomb as well for Costa Rica, and Guatemala knows that very well. And I think uh, one of the biggest wins was definitely this one, Naisu. It was that last play that was made. You get the glorious pathway out and setting things up here for Rio's Mons Benedetta to pop in the Electo Final and the Petrify to get two crucial pickoffs. He was able to get the triple kill here, eventually resulting to a wipeout here for, for Costa Rica and eventually going for the straight push. Yeah, again, very good synergy uh, coming out here from Guatemala. Something, like I said, we haven't been able to see too much of their games throughout the past couple days here, but it's great to see them bring a lineup like this to the table, make it work. They got the win under the 20-minute mark because, you know, really at that point too, Costa Rica, if, if they would have just had better positioning and they would have found the right targets, the burst damage was there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing with Ale. Like, he, like, 65,000 damage is massive. It's just unfortunate because as a Clint, you don't really have much, uh, much way to escape. And it was punished severely by Guatemala here. So, MVP, I don't know who to give this to, but Rios Monte would, especially at the end, with the uh the finding the yeah. electro final blow worked really great but again rios Monte wouldn't been able to do this without say it or even to an extent without having a kadita there to cover that extra grounds if for example you missed the electro final blow petrifying combination you know so they had so many great things there cholo as well had of course an amazing game on a roger in the jungle so it could go either way you know there's so many mm -hmm. different uh pretty much different um possible mvps here okay it's gonna be oh, rios mont i was gonna say either the either cholo rios mont mm -hmm. but rios mont was my number one pick for this it went eight one and six sixty thousand almost sixty one thousand damage dealt here throughout this and you can see it you know you didn't even need boots because yeah. benedetta moves fast enough without him and i believe the first item that was here again this was a gold lane yep benedetta, benedetta. right gold lane benedetta i don't see this often maybe you know you guys especially in the american regionals maybe you see this maybe this is a this is a way this is something that is a kind of niche because i would say at least over here southeast asia region you don't see too many gold lane benedettas going at it right but yeah i think even that first build path i think it was bod first and then maybe sky piercer second item mm -hmm. um but either way risk month's job was just so much easier with a glorious pathway so I'm wondering if they actually get an opportunity to do this, something similar, or if we'll see some respect bands, of course, coming out here from Costa Rica before they get to game number two, because so many so many things actually ended up working out here for Guatemala, allowing them to get to a point where, hey, they had an amazing early game all the way to the late game. So great to see from them. Congratulations to them for that game one. Again, this is a best of three. So we'll see if Costa Rica can go ahead and adjust in you know a few minutes here because we're gonna have a five minute break for you guys so sit tight we'll be back after this
Welcome back, everyone. After the short break here, we are in the first match between Guatemala and Costa Rica, and it is currently 1-0 in favor of Guatemala after a very interesting lineup that they brought to the table. Again, I'm Naisu, and this is Burger Kim. We're bringing the action here. It's day number one of the playoffs here for the American Regional Qualifiers, the road to the WEC in Riyadh. Kim, we just saw a very yep. interesting lineup. Uh, something that I feel like both of us didn't expect, or at least even maybe some of the viewers are like, man, where, where are some of these heroes yeah. going? You know, um, and I think you mentioned off uh, during the break too that you know this lineup, at least from Guatemala, from the I think we only had one game on stream, maybe day one it yep. was, uh, where we got to see them. So this is a this is a different Guatemala uh, as well, um, playing with one of the substitutes here. But mm -hmm. the thing is. The point with that for ISF, and we saw this yesterday too, there's always these uh, this room of like flexibility, I feel like, with the teams from ISF. And that's what makes it so interesting because um, even yesterday we saw, maybe it's the same lineup, but they were like switching roles, you know? Um, this time around though, Guatemala, whatever they made work for them in the draft, as unorthodox as it was, it worked well for them. And I feel like their communication was... Uh, on point for what yeah. the, the the game plan uh, against Costa Rica was here. So, yeah, super super on point, I would say. I mean, to to lay out like the petrifies, the glorious pathway, and even the electo final blow. I feel like there has to be, you know, you know, in game, like you have to kind of say, okay, I'm gonna go for some play. You have to lay it out at this moment. I, I don't know. It just blows my mind that they're able to pull that off. Not like once, like several times all throughout game number one, they were able to pull out yeah. like so many good plays. And I think that was a combo that we didn't expect to see. Because I, I, I was kind of thinking earlier, high loss, you got a Benedetta, then you got a Kadita. I was like, how are these heroes going to you know, synergize together, right? Because they each individually have a different skill set that is uh, a bit more like, oh, it's it's more like, oh, Kadita can burst. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the Benedetta is more of like, okay, single target as well. So how are they going to layer all that skills together? But I think, yeah, I think based on game number one, that was really a different Guatemala that I've seen uh, as compared to, you know, day number one where they, they played in the group stage. This is a different piece that they've unleashed here in, of course, the playoffs. And one more win for them to be able to move forward here in this round. But for Costa Rica, again, I think I I like how they're drafting when it comes to, you know, CCs. Uh, you got the, the heroes, definitely. I think I mentioned that earlier. They love to go for these CC heroes. Uh, not the, not mm. the hero, but the... Uh, crowd control they, they love to go for those, control, type yep. of com those type of combinations and then uh, i think what's really hard is you know how to layer them all together um for this next game yeah i think um while we wait for game two's draft here too i'm expecting you know this time around costa rica will be flipping over to the blue side um and then trying to get that priority pick we'll have to see exactly how they change that kind of draft uh, or even the bands here because previously they, you know, they remember they went and banned out two of the assassins here, the Ling and the Hayabusa. And just as an update, too, for our viewers while we wait for the draft here, I believe United States is up 1-0 right now uh, against Mexico. So, again, that's happening off stream. So just a little update. If you guys want to keep an eye on that, it's ISF.gg. You can see the currently ongoing matches for you Um for that so going to this now now that we're going to be jumping into the draft it is going to be costa rica on this blue side they'll get the priority they ban out the jushin maybe they still ban out some of the assassin choices here but honestly kim at this point with guatemala at least I, it's like just expect the unexpected at this point oh, like, yeah. I, the, the the previous lineup like it almost took everything that we're used to seeing in the draft and kind of like throwing it over the shoulder and just Guatemala being like, yep, we're just going to make this work, you know, um, but I don't know. Like I said, I, I think it was a very niche draft and I would love it to worked. see if they can pull something out like that again. But you can even see from Costa Rica, like they're just going to go with some quote unquote yeah. standard bands, you know, Jushin yeah. and Chip for now. Yeah, it's actually weird though that they, they banned this out knowing that they're on the blue side. They can go for more like, you know, targeted bands here up against Guatemala. But yep. uh, Therizla oh, and Ruby still prey. going to be staple bands here. The Roger yeah. also, which kind of uh, makes me think if uh, Costa Rica is going to be going for the Julian first pick here. They really love that. They've also picked it up in 
uh, a prior pick did rather in game number one. So that might be the case. The Zas now finally gets banned out in the first phase. Kind of weird though that uh, they let it slide in game number one. Nobody picked it up. But now this means that uh, other heroes are open. The Ling. But uh, will Guatemala answer out with uh, a Julian Angela? You kind of want to deny that Angeling pick uh, for Costa Rica. They, they can just go and snowball with that kind of lineup. Uh, or either, you know, Guatemala again goes in for. Uh, something uncontemporary which we've seen in uh, game number one it actually worked out well for them they still have to answer out to this Ling somebody that can disrupt the farm thinking like Hilda will that be an, an option or maybe a Grok that can be really yeah. really uh, a difficult here to go up against uh, when it comes to like farming getting up uh, the things that you need especially when you're on a Ling okay well the fact that there's a Ling here Angela is still open oh okay I I'm, I'm wondering yeah, I'm wondering if Costa Rica wants to pick up the Angela. They get the Edith. They're going against Matilda and Hylos again. So, Guatemala loving the Hylos pick here. This is it's funny because Hylos has been picked up quite a bit, um, just throughout the you know regional qualifiers alone. So again, we'll see Costa Rica. Do they actually want to block in a you know possible Angeline combination and get the momentum going? They already get an Edith, which is great, um, but they could have something else in mind as well see how they want to play around this i think the matilda though the matilda being over here for guatemala you know they could actually do quite a bit depending on how they want to put pressure on a ling uh just with the matilda alone oh, claude, wow. they actually go claude right away yeah. so first phase securing the the jungle and the the gold lane already here for costa rica yeah, I think uh, for for Ale, this was a, a pick that he also prioed in in the group stage. So uh, with the uh, Costa Rica actually, you know, choosing their gold laner in the latter part of the draft, kind of left them with uh, just a few options, right? So now better to go for the marksman that they're comfortable the with. They also got the link, but it's gonna Whoa. be an assassin versus assassin matchup here, and this is honestly what a lot of people are looking forward to. I mean, with the uh, the tank meta being in the, in play for a couple months already or i would say yeah a couple of patches already so i think uh, a lot of people really love to see this kind of matchup uh it's gonna be of course uh i would say the purple buff is gonna be something that uh, both teams have to watch out for especially if your uh your junglers are down uh, if somebody doesn't yeah. have the purple buff it's gonna be really hard guatemala now also banning out some mid laners i think that's gonna be something that both teams have to consider i'm i'm thinking you know based on the draft that guatemala had in game number one will it actually be a matilda in the mid lane because that that actually does happen right like some people yeah. um some players even professional players like falcons ab bren uh ogwen he actually builds a matilda to be like a sort of magic a hybrid matilda like half magic mm -hmm. damage half defensive items for the matilda so i don't know if that's going to be the case here for guatemala it's some at this point kim it's just like guatemala can probably just do what they want and make it work it's it's a mix of like comfort and a mix of um just the adaptability or the flexibility that this this lineup seems to have here um matilda if it does go in the mid lane it, it can actually the poke from matilda is still pretty good it's in a, in a way it reminds me of like for example when you have a fair miss that poke is something that's like you don't expect it to pull out the numbers that it does but Ma matilda can do that it can also be enough of a nuisance to deal with and put pressure on a ling and I think both teams might have that in mind where it's like we want to go ahead and put pressure on these assassins or maybe they just fight it out duke it out you know around these turtles and they go that way because right now the fact that you have a claude already locked in for costa rica guatemala doesn't have a gold lane just yet unless they pull something you know as a surprise yeah. like benedetta from previous oh, yeah. um but you know costa rica still goes and bans the Moskov, we'll see if they actually still want to ban out one of the standard kind of gold lane options mm -hmm. here. But typically, you know, because the Roger and the Moskov are gone, well, they take out the Kadita. So there's some oh, there's some respect. Yeah. yeah, there's some respect there from the previous game. For Guatemala, knowing that they have a couple options here, we'll see if they actually go with a standard marksman. Uh, mm -hmm. Mind you as well, Clint is still open. The damage was insane with the Clint oh, yeah. previously. So... I wonder what they're wonder what they're gonna plan here. Uh, are they gonna go for a mid lane a prio here since there's already a lot of mid laners out? Uh, Loyi, uh, Zask, even the Zushin is also out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with the assassin, 
uh, being put into play here for Costa Rica. I'm thinking uh, again, you know, I, I really love to go for like uh, Lilia, yeah, because of the survivability as compared to you know uh, other mages like Savior. They can also lock in. Uh, uh, or maybe I feel like uh, Guatemala will leave the gold laner for last. Like knowing that's the case that they did uh, for game number one, they left that last pick for themselves. They go in for the Lunox here. The Lilia comes through here for Costa Rica. Uh, last pick should kind of uh, answer our questions. Is this Edith going to go to the Rome? Or is it going to go to the XP? Uh, they already have a great way to set up here with the Edith. So they still need someone to kind of, I would say, front. Because for, for Guatemala, they have an assassin. They got a Lunos that can do the dive. They also got a protection from the Matilda. So yep. what's it going to be for them? I don't know. I, I think it would be better if this Edith goes in the roam. Um, then they put something else in the XP lane. Um, either will work, though, honestly, against this, because you still got to wonder, too, with where exactly is everyone going to go for, for Guatemala? And again, the Hylos mm -hmm. we saw flexed previously. Yep. Not yeah. sure if it's going to be flexed this time around. Tegro is going to be the roam. Okay, so All it right. is an Edith, Edith XP, Tegro roam. Uh, the damage profile here from Costa Rica is really well rounded, it, it covers its bases. For Guatemala, like I said, we got to just assume. Um, you know, you've got that. Yeah. Unless this is also, again, a gold lane Lunox. It was something yeah, we usually happen to see. And you have a Rome Hylos, for example, a mid lane Matilda. Um, again, if you're wondering why we are kind of throwing those out here, guys, it's just Guatemala pulled mm -hmm. something very unique the previous game uh -huh. for that. But Benedetta in the gold lane, they had a Kadita, of course, too, a Hylos as well. Um, and they made it work. So we'll see what they're thinking life. here. Mm -hmm. Oh, cla okay. classic Herit up against the Claude. But that's, a, I would say, a lot of magic damage, though, coming out from Guatemala. That's like four. The Hylos, the Lunox, the Matilda, and the... So this the, jungle uh, Hylos? Because Cholo's on this. Yeah, not unless they switched up the role, right? And put... The <laughs> it's confusing me. Whoa. And Zayt's on the Herit, so oh, wait, I don't yeah. know. So they right? switched up roles, I guess. Because, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, Cholo was a jungle previous game. Yeah. Hybus is here, though. So maybe they're switching up roles. This yeah, is what I think, we talked about earlier too, right? Yeah, I, I was going to say that it feels like Rios Mont is that kind of player who's good with the assassins, right? Like earlier he played the Benedetta. So now having these assassins open, I think Guatemala's like, okay, let's shake things up. Put uh, Rios on the uh, jungler position. Uh, put Zayt on the gold and then Cholo97 on the XV. I'm not so sure if this will kind of ruin the momentum of Guatemala or this is something that they've already kind of planned out from the very beginning but for costa rica it's still going to be the same uh they got some comfort picks up their sleeve uh, or up their lineup here for yeah. for this game number two for sick and danny on the uh Tigreal, and of course ale on the uh claude that was also banned away in game number one so they do have their hands on that hopefully make it to a game number three even out the series to a one one well we're gonna find out here rios mont is gonna be on the hayabusa this time around so they went ahead and did a little switcheroo mm -hmm. We're jumping into game number two in this best of three. It's the playoffs here for the American regional qualifiers for MLBB. And possibly, again, for, for Guatemala here, we're getting a very interesting kind of lineup this time around. It is Rios Mont with a Warcry emblem at that. So still, the fact that we saw Cholo on a Roger jungle previously, and now we get to see him on, this, on, a, Hylos. Uh, on a Hylos here in the... XP lane, mm -hmm. mind you, uh, is going to be very interesting, and that's what I—that's what's very fun about the ISF teams here. You see some switches, you see that flexibility, that adaptability, and a lot of the times, you know, you have these role swaps or these mm -hmm. even the substitutes. Like when substitutes come in for the teams too, they change the dynamic here. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica, on the other hand, you know, more or less, pretty much the the same thing here, same roles. Danny going to take uh, a brunt of the damage. He did. So much work, I, I feel mm -hmm. like, especially in the previous game, but you had a rough start, you know, in game number one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at uh, Guatemala here. I, I feel like these are players that, you know, it's fun to queue up with them on rank games <laughs> because they're so flexible. Come on, like, look at this lineup. Like, Cholo97 on a jungle position and now on the XP, but he's in trouble, though. Gonna use that revitalize to just uh, kind of heal up a little bit, but he's safe safe and sound for now but uh, it's gonna be uh costa rica actually creating the pressure down on the xp lane uh guatemala as well rotating over to the top but uh, i think for both junglers was really important here right before the turtle take they're gonna go for the blue buff both 
have already reached that level 4 power spike but again gonna be a lot of pressure again on the xp to make sure that you know flickers are used guatemala backs away to get in some hp they just got in that level four so now we see costa rica as well making their moves towards this side Mate, oh whoa Hold oh on. wow okay first blood gonna be drawn in here by zirial cholo 97 forced to back away a sub unable to do anything about it as costa rica will go straight for the turtle okay Costa Rica, I mean, great setup there. And that was also just from MOBA stream there. Mm -hmm. Able to set things up. Lin will get the turtle. So Costa Rica coming out swinging already in this early game, a game number two, exactly what they need to get to themselves a, a game of three under their belt. But early start, too. We'll see how Guatemala responds. Taking a look at the items, too. Nothing falling into place just yet. Looks like it's going to be a Sky Piercer, Sky Piercer mm -hmm. first item for Rias Mont. As he's building that up. Again, it's only 1,500 gold, so... We see this a lot. And on the flip side, Lin is not going to pick up that Sky Piercer early on, uh, going for the different build path here. But there it is, already locked in for Rios Mont. So this is where it can actually be kind of deadly, yep. you know, especially in the hands of a Hayabusa. Because if you get them low enough for Guatemala here, then you can just allow Rios mm -hmm. Mont to come in with a Shadow Kill and possibly find uh, uh, early pickups, even against some of these tankier heroes from Costa Rica. So right now, they're not able to find anything. This is a good choice for Costa Rica, too, to play a little bit on the back foot. You know, even though they got that little bit of lead, we're talking, what, 1,000 gold or so, yep. uh, based off that early um, rotation and getting that objective, it's good for them. Also, a Thunder Belt early picked up by Mobile Stream here. Mm. Has that. This is a typical thing now that we see a lot of XP laners oh, yeah. doing. Uh, it's just so much value in a first item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, also to be a little bit extra tanky when it comes to the engages. But now, okay, mobile stream a little bit too deep in the jungle. Ogi Shadow Kill there still survives. Forced to pop in that Primal Wrath as uh, Guatemala. They're unable to find anything, but it forces out the flicker though from mobile stream as Lin gonna try to go in for the Tempest of Blades <laughs> Red Trees. Oof. The uh, jungle creep there, but uh, Rio Smod goes in for the shadow. Nothing else is gonna be done here. 15 seconds before the next turtle. Yeah, Lin's doing a great job. Lin's like two levels ahead of uh, Rios Mon right now. Well, he just hit level seven, so he's got that. But so far, Lin's having a good time. It's it's a lot better, uh, I would say, a safer mm -hmm. path for him to rotate outside. Oh. Okay, Ale forced to use the flicker out. Everybody's pretty low here. A sub for oh. the flicker in. Go in for the circling eagle onto Ale. Will it be enough to take him down? Basic attacks come through as he's able to... Take oh, down Ale. Yep, Danny. Gonna, gonna try to go in for some play, but no backup just oh, yet. No, He's Danny. all alone on the top side with the rest of the team. They're all the way here. Cholo97 forced to drop down real low and pop in the glorious pathway to safety. But this means Costa Rica again getting the prime position on the turtle. Wow, Danny survived that too. So I, I was actually expecting him to go down. They're gonna mm -hmm. get the turret. They trade it for another objective though. So tur turtle for the objective is the play honeymoon just picks up the ice cream wand so has that it is deciding to pick up a little extra utility slow down the members of costa rica so that they can have a follow through but right now man rios mont has to catch up it's falling behind in levels falling behind most likely even in the economy even with that uh sky piercer first item but it's just sub really trying to hold down this turret here yeah uh, unfortunately not gonna happen not turret finally falls tier one on the bottom side Costa Rica will be able to find, you know, these little wins here and there, but Guatemala pretty much doing the same. But look at the gold difference that Costa Rica has been able to get because of the focus on these objectives. Yeah, which is something that they need to do, right? <laughs> Looking at Rio Smont here as well, like the basic attacks already dealing that much damage, like one fourth HP has been chunked down uh, towards the members here of Costa Rica. But over on the top side, though, Naisu, it's going to be a 1v1 battle here between Moba Zayn. Mobile stream, rather. And uh, Cholo97 almost got me there. <laughs> inspired, inspired. Yeah. yeah, inspired by, of course, the Mobile Zane. But you know what? Uh, Costa Rica's really doing a great job in pressuring all of these side lanes. And they've actually equalized the turret take. Because earlier, it was actually Guatemala that uh, traded in the turret for the turtle. And now Cholo97, again, 1v1, 2v1 duel here. And with the Ooh. glooms coming out from the Lilia. Forced to pop in the Revitalize and Glorious Pathway. Will it be enough to take down this turret as they go in and out? Ogi Shadow Kill here from the Hayabusa of Rios Mon, but unable to take anyone down. And that's really the, the value of Alilia. You get in the Black Shoes and it's going to be so much more easier to survive all of these team fights. 
Oh, Honeymoon, gonna be trapped under mm -hmm. the turret. The rest of the team making his way. Real Smont is there too. The wave's gonna be cut, but I think they just have to give the turret up. Oh, well, Honeymoon forced to use in the Order of Brilliance here onto Danny. Are they gonna have a follow? Seven up, Lin goes in for the final pickoff. Circling Eagle by Sub here. It's gonna be a double kill as Cholo97 falls down as well. Romer gonna get traded here, but it's gonna be a 1 4 2 trade still in favor of the side of Costa Rica as they, you know, force in. More of these pokes coming in from the Lilia of Zirial. Two turrets down. Lead is up by at least like 3k here for Costa Rica. Yeah, they're, they're building that lead really well. They have to. Also, bottom push here. Zaman Force already dropped on the bottom side. Should be one hit away on the turret. Oh, one on one. Yep. Oh, he's able to survive though for, for uh, Lin. Able to get back into safety, use that Finch Poise, and now Costa Rica again. They're giving way too much of these turtles to Costa Rica, which is kind of like helping them get that lead up against Guatemala. They have the pokes here with the Lilia as they're already working up on this turtle. One fourth HP. Glorious pathway has been used here by Cholo97. Gets in the onward from the Edith. And Zirial oh. gonna be able to poke everyone. Blazing the went from ALO to the back side for taking that. He goes down, but it's gonna be Rios Mon picking up the turtle for the side of Guatemala. Cholo97 goes down as well. Killing spree picked up here for Lin. Honeymoon not gonna be able to survive that one. Rios Mon as well gonna be able to shadow out that one. Two, four, three exchange here and i would still say that was costa rica that got in the better trade yeah costa rica i mean they lose the the turtle to the hands of guatemala but it just it was a good set from from forsaken danny he was able to get a multiple member i think three member implosion and it just seems like guatemala like i said you know the, with the lineups that they have they didn't have enough firepower to fight it out you're gonna lose the tier two turret down here wow Satan. yeah it's taking a lot of damage from the Gloom. Sub, gonna go in for the uh, shield. Circling Eagle, Applosion oh. again on the three. Zirial picks up a killing spree as well as Lin. But over on the top side, it's gonna be Ale getting traded there. Costa Rica, eight kills onto this game. They've gotten in four turrets as well. And so far, all of the turtles went towards their side. Guatemala, I think they have to kind of like wait out for the late game. Because if you think about it, Honeymoon, Zayt, these are heroes that do well when it comes to the late game. But so far, Costa Rica, they've been creating so much pressure. Plus, the pokes from Zirial is just way too much to take. And even Cholo97 can't take the glooms coming out from the Lilia. Yeah, the, the Lilia glooms are a little bit too much. Oh, top side, Zayt gonna mm -hmm. drop the Zaman Force. Mm -hmm. Danny sub, forced to use the Circling Eagle oh. out. Is able to survive. But now Zirial... Gonna get the poke there by Cholo97. Turret up top still survives, but Costa Rica, the pressure is just there for them. Sub is gonna be able to find anything. Glorious Pathway being used here by Cholo97. Or Order of Brilliance, MOBA Stream gonna take a lot of the damage. Forsaken Daddy goes down, but the Blazing Duet to clean up the work by Ale. He takes down two. Lin as well gonna do the cleanup work. Zayn's the only one left. They get the shutdown onto Rios Mod, and it's a wipeout, a triple. For Ale into this game. And they should be able to take the Lord and even the second tier tower here. Yeah, definitely. It's such a good placement there with the Blazing Duo on the back side from Ale. They're going to get these shields down. Most likely get this turret. Well, the Canyon Minion goes down. They do get the turret, the base turret. And they're going to get the Lord out of it. So just a whole lot happening here for Costa Rica. Everything they need to possibly end the game on this push. Because, you know, that's a thing that... That once that Claude was locked in, had the stacks that he needed, jumps into the backside with the blazing duet. It was just nothing that Guatemala really could do to handle it. I mean, uh, even if, even when Cholo dropped down the glorious pathway, like that was the sign. Like, guys, we are going to fight this. We're going to commit to it. But then they forgot their backline. Yeah. And at that point, once Cholo's committed, all you have is hopefully a guiding wind from sub. Like, that's about mm -hmm. it. Right. So when that was already kind of expended, it's just free pickings for Costa Rica. They were able to just go ahead and choose what they wanted and picked off from there. And so for Ale, you know, he's having a hell of a time on this claw yeah. right now. And the rest of the Costa Rica will go ahead and march in with this Lord. They've managed the waves really well. Cholo's going to get spotted out here. Yep. Going to get in the uh, basic attacks here from oh. Lin. Just able to take him down as Ale will pick up the final kill. Forsaken Daddy! Flickers in to take down Honeymoon Circling Eagle here from Sub. They're oh, locking oh, oh. in the base here as Costa Rica will force out the game number three.
in under 12 minutes. This time around, Costa Rica was like, hey, you know, you guys had your game number one, Guatemala, but that's all you're getting. You know, you're not going to go and pick another composition like that and bring it to us. We're going to bring it to you. And that's exactly what they wanted to do with this Ling first pick. And it ended up working wonders for them. It's just... Uh, even for even for Danny here, like this time around, it's a Tigreal second time around, but he had a much better game. And this time he was able to find those multiple setups with the implosions that really just worked out for them. So I, I did say leading into this, I was like, hey, Kim, I think this is probably going to be a three game series based on how these two teams have performed the previous two days. And it looks like we got game three on our hands. Yeah, I'm actually wondering, like, you know the, the switch up of roles as well from Guatemala it really just changes the dynamic right like I know they wanted to yeah. go head to head with Costa Rica with like an assassin lineup like putting Rios Monter maybe Cholo 97 is not that comfortable but this is where it all started here the uh, onwards coming out from MOBA stream and I think this time they gave him a hero that can you know really set up the plays as compared to game number one where he had the R lot he can have the final slash he was able to get in some crucial plays but this Eat it works so much well, and even for second Danny, right? Like, had such a good time in this game, able to set up so many implosions, and it was backed up here by the members of Costa Rica. Yeah, this was, and that, that's one of the implosions we were talking about, you know, just. The, it was a much better time for Forsaken Danny, and I'm not sure if he'll get the TIG reel for game number three because it seems like he was a big component. Yeah. I mean, even in game one, when they showed little signs, like Costa Rica was showing little signs of coming back, it was a lot of the times from Forsaken Danny able to set things up with the Tigreal. And maybe we see Gua you know, Guatemala switch back to the, the roles and what yep. they did in game one. Not so much the picks, but maybe the roles. Because I feel like, you know, for Rios Montier, he really struggled on the Hayabusa. And part of that was just being able to find those openings and the timings on when to use, you know, the shadow kill and everything else. Because once it was down, it just felt like he was running away and there wasn't much else that could be done. Also, part of that is the fact that you have a Harif as a gold laner, you know? Yep. So once the Zaman Force is gone, what are you going to do, especially against a Claude? And like you mentioned, you know, this uh, a big part of this Costa Rica lineup, too, was the Lilia. The fact that you can actually bait out a lot of the abilities, a lot of the ultimates even, from uh, just this entire lineup from Guata Guatemala. And then Black Shoes was a, a tough thing to get around because you already spend so much of your to your kit, you know, from, from Guatemala. And then it's all just Black Shoes away, basically. Uh, and so they didn't really have enough time to get to where they needed to be. And you can see this, you know, just how well things fell into place for for costa rica along the side like they had control pretty much of the entire game for the most part uh, down from the objectives to the, even the team fighting potential and i feel like with this lineup when you look at guatemala's lineup like the hylos the hylos this time around especially in the side lane just did not seem worth yeah. the the pit there there could have been something much better placed in that xp lane i feel like um than, than the Hylos, right? But Lin is gonna go ahead and grab this MVP performance on that Ling, Ling for Lin. And uh, it was great, 6-0-8, 43,000 damage. Interesting too, I'm not sure yeah. when he picked up the Thunderbelt. Oh but, yeah. Uh, yeah, what, what, a, what a great performance, you know? Yeah, I think with, with uh, Costa Rica actually leading the game and taking in a lot of turtles, it's actually surprising to me that Lin built up like uh i would say a very defensive uh build coming out from the ling you'd usually go for like you know malefic roars or maybe even a full bod but he just there was that respect still coming out from from lin uh for this game but honestly um well i think the uh switch of roles here for guatemala kind of like had an impact on them for this game right it really changed the dynamics yeah. not so sure what they will go for for their final lineup in the next game as we're going to be having that match point as well well, they're at match point. It's one to one. Again, this is what we expected here in the playoffs between all the teams here. Hopefully we get to see uh, this continued on. But we are going to be taking a short break, five minutes while we get ready for game number three. Match point for both teams. We'll be back after this. Welcome back once again. It's me, Nice Sue, joined here with Burger Kim, and we are down to one game in this first match between, of course, Costa Rica and Guatemala. And this is the 
American regional qualifiers, the road to the WEC in Riyadh later this year for ISF. And it's been a good series so far. Mm -hmm. It's been, uh, I would say, you know, out of these three games, this is kind of what we expected here, Burger Kim, for the playoff portion of this, you know, and I know this all happens like very quickly. So oh, by the time we get to the playoffs here, I, I feel like the teams have fallen into their motions, if you will, or their mm -hmm. picks and their, their strategies. But the interesting thing for this, and if you guys miss the first two games is, yeah, Guatemala has done something different, mm -hmm. like even with their lineup, even yeah. with the roles and something that we always see uh, between teams and ISF or for a lot of them is they switch their roles based on their players or the substitutes that they have. So game one, they found success with a very interesting lineup. Now game two, I feel like they struggled a little bit against what Costa Rica brought to the table. And um, I don't know how they're going to adjust to this because I think if they don't ban out, and I'm assuming we see a switch of signs again. Yep. So it's like, I think Guatemala also has to go ahead and, and, and take care of the assassins again. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, they tried to go uh, with a Hayabusa matchup against a Ling. And unfortunately, I just don't think that was uh, worked out really well for them. Mm -hmm. And just to give you guys a heads up, by the way, too, uh, USA won versus mm -hmm. Mexico 2-0. Two zero. Two so zero. they swept Mexico. Um, they were both undefeated going into that game. This was this was happening off stream, mm -hmm. just so you guys know. If you want to keep an eye out, check out isf.gg. You can find the standings there and everything else. So, yeah, just so you guys know, USA swept Mexico. So we'll mm -hmm. find out here. Uh, at yeah. least we get three games for this Burger King. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering if they did the exact same thing that they did in the previous days, retribution, <laughs> arrival. I don't know. Okay, it was off stream, but like what Nice you said, you guys can check out the results over at isf.gg. But for now, it is all ice on uh, Costa Rica and Guatemala, and it seems like there's not going to be a switch. Nice you, Guatemala still okay. going to be on the red side, but it seems like teams on the blue side have been finding more success. Uh, based on you know what we, what we've seen and maybe it's because you get a prio pick on on a, a hero that you really want to get your hands on unless it gets banned out Costa Rica again doing the same thing that what uh, in what they did in the previous games ban out the Zushin ban out the chip very standard bans as for Guatemala huge respect uh, for for MOBA streams uh, Terizla it has always been on the ban list here which kind of makes me think, will Guatemala go for the Assassin bans, considering the performance of the Ling, but it's still going to be the same bans here. Ruby Terizla, uh, Roger as well for Costa Rica, so no difference at all from game number two here. Okay, uh, interesting that, yeah, they go this way. And for Costa Rica, I think they could just pick up the Ling again, honestly. Yeah. Um, unless Guatemala decides to, you know what, let's ban it. Um, I don't know, but maybe they decide that they would actually be willing to go against the Ling. Maybe they do a role swap too, you know, oh, yeah. this, this time around. Like we see Cholo back in the jungle instead of Rios Mont. But I think that's the kind of the probably the discussion here is like, do we ban out the Ling? Do we leave it open? How do we want to approach that? Do we want to go Assassin versus Assassin again? Um, because they they could have gone something other oh. than okay, they, okay this was a major problem in, in yeah. a previous game right uh, from from Ale so it was dealing with that there's a ling this is what we kind of expected so are we to see them go ahead and do a similar yeah. uh, response to this their first their their response to the ling previous game high loss Matilda first high loss Matilda I don't think the change the hylos like just yeah. change the hylos and we'll be okay like yeah. you can pick up matilda again um but yeah change the hylos i would say for this one yeah i think it's way too early to pick it up too like the matilda i would understand picking up and uh picking it up for the first two picks but they really yeah. need to prepare themselves for this sling like how do you answer out to this sling will you go for an aggressive What's start that? okay cho that is one way to go uh definitely can pressure lin sling in the jungle and will they go for um perhaps like a, a mid laner already or perhaps maybe go for their jungler i'm kind of curious though like i think with this julian pickup for guatemala this might be them going back to the basics cholo 97 back in the jungle because uh, so far he's been picking this up uh for the previous games that guatemala had as well so i guess uh they have a good wave here in terms of the jungle they also have the cho to kind of pressure out the ling Angela is still open though. I'm not so sure if Costa Rica is uh, going for that combination because so far for Forsaken Danny, it has always been heroes 
that can set up. Like it, it has always been the Tigre. I don't think uh, Forsaken Danny has picked up anything else but that. Interesting too, yeah, because it's like you, you might as well you might as well pick it up. Um, I'm just wondering if like the Cho he makes it work, oh. uh, especially with, now that you have a Julian because this is a the Edith comes through again, which worked wonders. Now this time around because the clown was banned. They just pick up the Mozcob in that first phase. So, Costa Rica obviously still has a very similar game plan with this. Kadida, before it gets banned out from Costa Rica, like we saw in the previous draft, Guatemala wants it. Um, and maybe this is going to help with that pickoff potential because, in a way, even though there's no Benedetta over here from Guatemala, they have good pickoff with a Cho and a Kadida. And that might be enough for them to just go ahead and get a numbers advantage roll with that because in back in game one you guys missed it they had a kadita and that benedetta combination the benedetta though mm -hmm. was in the gold lane oh. um and yep, yep, that's yep. what they ended up doing right so in in con conceptually guatemala is hey, in a similar way it's like we want to just get a pick off we want to get momentum building we have a julian that can help build up with a with a synergy build here with a kadita with just locking in a genius wand if you will um, and it helps kind of burst those Destroy. burst those members down faster from Costa Rica. Yeah. You can see this too. They're actually going to go ahead and ban out the Tigreal, uh, <laughs> take that out of the picture, yeah. like we were just talking about, like you mentioned. That's all we've seen Danny mm -hmm. play, mm -hmm. and then the Zask as well. Yeah, finally that that gets put up on the ban list because somebody has to take notice of that. Like Danny hasn't <laughs> used anything else, right? This is going to force. Danny to use something else for this game. Uh, you know, based on the hero pool or, or perhaps like the play style that Danny has been uh, putting out for the previous previous matches, previous live stream matches, even in the group stage, it has always been about the setup. So I think we might actually see something else. Maybe, uh, you know, considering the meta right now, Carmilla, uh, perhaps somebody who can really set up the tempo here for, for their side. But Guatemala, again, going back to... Um, a very scary dive setup here, really preparing uh, for the Moscow of Costa Rica as well. Not so sure if they missed out on that last ban. They did ban out the Brody, making sure that they'll win the lane. So now, yep. what will they put in the gold lane here for Guatemala? They put up a, a Benedetta earlier for game number one. It worked well for them, but now this is a very different composition that they have. So I'm not so sure. Will they go for the traditional marksman or will they go for, you know, maybe something uncontemporary once again? I think uh, whether they do that or not, whether they build something similar to what we saw in game one, they've got the grounds laid for it, right? The foundation is there. Uh, and this is kind of the same position we were back in game one's draft where you're like, all right, we have an idea where everyone's going, but then we found out really quickly oh, we yeah. didn't, you know? Um, okay, Harith, this makes things okay. a little bit easier, right? Harith is gonna go in the gold lane. Of course, we, we have the Kadita here going into that mid, Cho in the roam. Julian in the jungle here so that it, it's a little more standard in a way but like I said the concept is still the same they want to pick off one of the members here from Costa Rica which could most likely be Lin on the Ling if they can mm. catch him um Lilia again this solves that oh. same case but wow Costa Rica is like we want to do the same thing we want yeah. to pick you guys off and they get a Kaja uh so this is very yeah it's almost the same, you know, same concept going head to head here for this one. The last pick, Lolita mm -hmm. from Guatemala. So this is, I like this better than their game one draft. Yeah. Um, because it's still like the same idea. It's just more well-rounded, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes more sense, right? Like the, the combos of the heroes here. The Numenon Blast. Yeah. Then you get the Cho. But wait, hold on. Gold lane Cho. Does this mean... Okay, so Rio's mod on the Cho. This means it's a... Golden show, or did they switch up uh, roles again? Right. I, I, yeah, that that <laughs> right? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah we'll we'll have to find um, out. Costa Rica XP though. Lane Cho. Mm -hmm. XP lane show. I'm assuming because Rios Mont's gonna go back to the mm -hmm. XP lane, right? So, yeah, Cholo, Cholo in the jungle here. No, no, Are you no, like in their, right? Yeah, because yeah, because Rios Mont was on gold, right, for game number one, and then now Zayt, who was the XP lane. In game number one is going uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It, oh man, okay. Guatemala's just like playing with my mind right now, messing with my mind right now. Like that's think, right, Rios Mont, Benedetta, mm -hmm. Gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pickoffs oh. after pickoffs here for Guatemala. So they have like uh, the first three picks are all about the pickoffs. You got the Lolita to set things up, but you know I think with Costa Rica, it's 
instant setups here for the Edith and the Kaja. Whereas I think for the Lolita, it, there's still a little bit more delay when it comes to the Numenon Blast. So let's see. I think this is a bit more contemporary for, for the draft in game number three. But you, you kind of have to toss away what happened in game number one and game number two. Because this is already the match point, Naisu. Match point for both the teams here fighting for a spot to continue on here, of course, between Costa Rica and Guatemala. It comes down to this in this best of one. Will it be Guatemala or Costa Rica this time around? We take a look at the emblems too, real quick. Whole lot of quantum charge mm -hmm. for Costa Rica here. And over on the other side, we have a whole lot of lethal ignition, right? So mm -hmm. uh, obviously they want to go ahead and accomplish yeah. certain things here with this. And yeah, so Rios Mont in the XP lane uh, this time around. Mm -hmm with that uh that cho so interesting interesting to see how they get how they're gonna make this work because the pickoff's got to be there the lolita's great mm -hmm. i feel like for the idea here you're gonna see that too and and they can kind of control some of this early game positioning too like they have good burst already early on this month could be in trouble mm -hmm. here um mind you too like with the change that happened to the cho like the last patch i think it was yeah or the patch before when he gets this like extra um, damage on the basic attack. I think it's like 180% uh, basic attack damage. Oh, yeah. That actually is surprisingly quite a bit of damage that that you have to keep in mind of. Um, so if they get poked down, and I think that's why Mobus Reem has to be careful of yeah. this 1v1. Of course, you have Primal Wrath eventually, but um, right now you can see them kind of paying attention yeah. down here towards that mm -hmm. bottom side. Yeah, I'm not so sure if Rio's one. Okay, he's going to be able to uh survive that one uh pokes coming in from zirial as well but i think they both acknowledge the fact that they have to be alive before this turtle take half hp already for moba stream Ooh. down bottom there's a lot of pokes coming through i think the flicker was already used by moba stream right now with the help of zirial so they should be able to kind of like survive this lane but that's gonna be three members rios oh. want going go for the flicker and the waves of wow. dragon and that's gonna be honeymoon Picking up the kill as Zirial will be able to pick off one as well. It's going to be two for one trade, but here comes Lin. Going to go in for the basic attacks. Honeymoon in trouble. Does not have the petrified Tempest of Blades is up. Oh. Still survives with one HP. And now here comes Sub. Also dealing a ton of damage as well as Cholo 97. Oh, Danny. Danny forced to back away and has chains and flickers oh. out to safety. Guatemala picks up two kills. And as for Costa Rica, they were able to clap back with one. Very close. I mean, both teams really finding a little bit of wins here and there, getting some crucial battle spells out down too. Now who's going to get the turtle? It's going to be started up by Guatemala here. Looks like Lin's trying to get into position once he gets that buff, but I think he might be too late. Could just be an objective going to the hands of Guatemala as it is secured. So once again, Guatemala finding their footing in this early game, just like they did in game one. So still, they'll go ahead and we'll see how they kind of play around this minor lead they've built themselves. Mm -hmm. so, oh, wow. Zayt, Ale though, gonna get taken down. So that's a one for one trade over here at the top side. But here, Lin, gonna try to go in for Honeymoon. Pops in the rough waves here to be able to get out in the Tempest of Blades as well. Gonna be picked up here as Lin, gonna take down Honeymoon finally. Has the pin points to get out, but they got what they wanted here for, for Lin. Already one kill. 3-3 three, three is our score, but it's still going to be Guatemala on the lead, care of the turtle that they've taken in. Yeah, I think a lot of this too, when it comes down to it, you know, the, the, even the trading between the gold laners and everything, uh, it's really just up to both teams finding up their, their setup potential because now that you have the Divine Judgment from Danny, this is always a, a moment where you can just go and try to get an automatic pickoff, especially when the flicker is available. First items fall into place, not actually just not yet i mean you got the wings here of course mm -hmm. cholo but uh still everybody's working on that first item mm -hmm. moba mm -hmm. flickers out to safety though but that's a lot of pokes coming out from rio small which kind of makes me think that he's really good at you know the side lanes but the dynamics yeah. change though when he's like the jungler right it's different like when he's on the side he can definitely be a lane bully you've seen it on the gold you've seen it here also on the xp actually forcing moba stream to back away several times missing out a few cards here but the gold aid is kind of negligible at this point uh, just a couple of hundred still in favor of guatemala now we see sub as well over on the that side oh. going in for the newman blast gets cancelled out there by forsaken daddy it's gonna get traded out though it's gonna be guatemala that picks up the kill here over on top yeah, this time around too. They're gonna stay here, so a little more attention. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Where's respawn? Mon? Whoa, what was that? <laughs> Way of the Dragon. That was the damage. Yep. The damage coming out from the Cho, the Blade of Hephthasis. Way too much coming in as Rios Mon again flickers out to safety. Was gonna try to go for Lin and now Sub. Gonna be tanking up the damage. Forced to use the flicker out as well as oh. Honeybone. Gonna try to go in for the burst. The Petrify and the Rough Waves. He's gonna get punished though with the Divine Judgment. They do get some clap back here as Guatemala. Oh. They will be able to take the turtle, but now Zay gonna try to punish two members. Zaman Force to take down two and the turret up top as Cholo going to be able to take away that purple buff from the side of Costa Rica. Wow, oh, Guatemala. They're still going to be going. Okay, yep. He is able to pop in the black shoes. So I'm going to go in for the Tempest, uh, or rather the wow. Luminon Blast there as Rios Mon picks up the kill, but instantly gets punished there by Lin. Good thing Lin was there to, to clean up the kill because Guatemala was just getting everything the past minute or so. Able to kind of flip a switch. They've got themselves now a good lead. 2,000 gold ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, they got a turret down in the whole exchange, too. So this is a lot of uh, a lot of momentum in their favor. Plus the fact that Honeymoon has four kills of that. You know, this Kadita gets a lot more dangerous at this point of the game because as soon as that Petrify is there, um, depending on this, the rest of the build path, too, it's almost a guaranteed kill. Oh, wow. Tempest of Blades here. Those three members. Instant burst there. But Zayn says no. It's not over. Oh. Lin able to survive, but... No, that is going to be getting the takedown as uh, the burst coming through here for Zayd finally gets shut down here. Sub going to be able to take in the damage. Ale going to be able to free hit everyone. And now it's only Cholo97 left to defend. Enhanced chase comes through. Zeryal and Forsaken Danny gets taken down real low as Honeymoon picks up the kill. Ale going to go oh. in for Cholo97. Going to be able to outplay him too for the price of two as well. They did get the shutdown onto Zayd. And sub as well. They also get the tower. So Guatemala right now just keeps on going for these dives. And they're unafraid to do so, right? Like, it's not only Rios Mon. You've seen it from Honeymoon. You've seen it from Tolo97. And right now, Lin going to be able to get in the purple buff as well. Huge lead, I would say, for Guatemala. They've been taken in three turrets here. And they continuously do more as they take down this mid tower as well. Wow, they threw everything. The Zaman Force, the Numenon Blast into that. They wanted that tier 1 turret. They're going to be able to get themselves this turtle too. That's 3 for 3 now for the turtles for Guatemala. Mm -hmm. okay. They're just keeping them at bay. Mm -hmm. Stream forced to pop in that Primal Wrath. They got in that turret. And now Rios Mod as well going to try to make in some place. They're going to get cancelled out though. But Lin making the, uh, the minion waves move as well over on the bottom side. That's the best thing that you can do as of the moment. But looking at this, like Guatemala just has control over the map. They've taken in four turrets, all of the turtles as Costa Rica only taking in one so far. I'm thinking how can Costa Rica kind of turn things around here? And really, it's up to Ale. You know, late game mm -hmm. potential is going to be huge on the Moskov. Lin is struggling a little bit, but for the most part, Lin is just, you know, as long as he's able to get the buff and then put some pressure on the side lanes even, that's great because him and Ale can do that. Um, and that's the thing, as long as you land that Spear of Destruction, you can join these fights later on. So Guatemala has to make sure that if they want to maintain this lead, you know, 4,000 gold ahead right now, it's making the smart decision, not getting a little bit too, you know, aggressive and overzealous. Like, that, yeah, they can pick off as well, but so can Costa Rica. So as long as they don't get punished, Lin. Mm -hmm. Tempest of Plays, was he able to get, yeah, he was able to get in the purple buff, oh, but now the Numenor stung. Blast, yep, gets canceled out, Lin! Gets basic attack there by, by Zayt, instantly bursted down. That is huge. 39 seconds before the Lord and now Forsaken Danny. You're gonna try to go for oh, all the Enhanced Chains! Enhanced Chains come through. They take down Lin and Forsaken Danny. So clean coming out from Guatemala. And I think the, the purpose here of having the Cho of, uh, of Rios Mod is just to bait out all of the Purify skills from both Zirial and Ale. And this is the reason why, you know, Honeymoon. And even Zayd can go in for these crazy dives. It's crazy because they're, they're just pure damage. I mean, aside from the fact that you have a, a sub on the Lolita here, like even even Rios Mont is damaged. Like, yeah, he's yeah. enough kind of burst to make them second guess or maybe burn a flicker or something. They're still going to fight here in the jungle. Mm -hmm. They yeah. flicker out, but Lord is up. So right now, they're going to make a play here on Rios Mon. Oh no, he's way too deep. He's able to flicker out to safety. And that onwards comes through. 
That is gonna be huge as well. Like one member down here for the side of Guatemala right before the Lord as mobile stream. Again, gonna go in for the onwards. Dash is out here for Honey oh. Mobile. And chase from Cholo97. And sub goes in for the the backup. Mobile stream goes down as well. Retribution has been used here by Cholo97. And Hans Chase comes through. And the black shoes for Zeriel. But I don't think he can survive this one because Cholo97 gonna be able to burst you down with the enhanced chase three members down and guatemala can just go straight for the lord cholo doing some crazy things did zayn just take that purple too is this does he yeah, have he the did. purple buff oh, oh no. man that's tough yep that's tough for lynn mm -hmm. so right now I'm, I, and at this point you know it's gonna be a lord it's gonna be a lord in the hands of guatemala they are massively ahead right now in terms of just even economy, I mean, it's it's 5,000 gold lead, 6,000 gold lead right now, but you can see from the team fighting, they control the pace, they control the decision making, and they're the ones picking members off of Costa Rica here. Costa Rica, even with their pickoff uh, centric lineup, haven't really been able to find much. For Sagan Dandy, you can definitely see, you know, this time around, he's having a harder time because, again, with the TIG rule, you just, you know, set yep. things up, a flicker, you pop the implosion, and that's what you want to do but with the concha it's a little bit harder because you have to select the right target to divine judgment and bring to your team and uh right now it's just a little bit difficult on who who do they even go for oh uh, yep forsaken danny is unable to fight anyone lin gets bursted down that is gonna be all of the ultimates tossed out by guatemala to get that pick off and without lin they're unable to take down the back lines. They have to melt down this lore. But Cholo 97 oh. once again goes in for the enhanced chains. Forsaken Danny goes down. Look at the damage coming through. Momo Stream trying to make something happen. It's a double kill picked up here. Momo Stream gonna go in for the armor. It's forced to pop in that primal rat, dishing out some damage. But it gets taken down instantly. The shutdown comes through here. Ooh. For Zeriel, a wipeout, but they don't have any minions. It is a wipeout. Lin is back. Yep, they got it. Uh, Lin should be able to clear this one out, though. But they're going to force it. They're going to force it in. They do Lin doesn't have the purple force. boss. <laughs> Tempest of Blades there just to survive. Will they go for the end here, Naisu? But it seems like the minion waves are not coming through. They can get oh, punished here. And there's the divine judgment on to Zayt. Lin taken down real low. But Guatemala <laughs> will not be able to finish the job just yet. Guatemala is so close. I mean, they, they wanted to end it there, but then, you know, they realize, yeah, Lin is up. We still don't have a full force of minions in, and we only have that top side down. Unfortunately, they'll have to wait a little bit longer for their next push into the base here, but Costa Rica finds some breathing time, a moment to possibly get back into this game and turn things around. Looking at the items, too, you've already got, you know, the Trinity locked in here for Ale. Ale's got to be able to pop off and find the positioning. You can see Lin, too, picks up that Thunderbelt, has the Haas Claws to go ahead and get that point. Cholo has been on point with the chains, though, and now also picks up a Winter's Crown. So has a little more defense, and of course, you have an Immortality from Sub. So this is, a, this is difficult for Costa Rica, because even though they bought themselves some time, because of the disparity in terms of gold, like, it's still difficult to find a pickoff. Like, even if you have sub here on the front side of things, you know, that's obviously not who you want to lock down. We saw earlier, before that whole siege in the base, Forsaken Danny got the Divine Judgment off of Rios Munt, and then there was no follow-up, you know? So, even though Rios Munt's job is literally just to get these spells out, it's it's a damage Cho build, pretty much, you know, uh, with a little bit of defense. But look at this, like, they already have enough. Conceal's gonna be used. Oh, Flicker out from sub here. As, uh, he's gonna go in here and get tugged in by Divine Judgment. Cholo 97! It's a mistake! He's gonna try to go for the advances, and now Costa Rica can clap back up against Guatemala. They're running for their lives. The Numina Blast here onto sub as Rio's Mont going in for the Wave the Dragon onto Forsaken Daddy, but instantly gets taken down there by Ale. Huge mistake from Guatemala. They were trying to go for the pickoffs, but it's gonna be Costa Rica picking up this enhanced lord of the game. All right, that's a big ball drop right there from yep. Guatemala because Cholo didn't need to be there. He, he shouldn't have been the first one to go down in the exchange. He should have just gone for that lord. Again, you know, they've been doing it time and time again where they just get those enhanced chains off. They get the win for the skirmishes and the team fights, but that time around, you know, they do still have to respect the fact that things can happen like that, especially with the Kaja across from them. And so at this point, now they're going to find themselves mm -hmm. on the defense. Their backs aren't against the wall completely yet, 
they got to deal with this lord you know again they they have good clear they can clear things up pretty quickly maybe hold on of course to the base turrets and possibly even still a tier two turret because all this does is turn things in, into a point where now it's even right for costa rica at least they got massive gold in their favor which is going to help them out Mm -hmm. in that firepower department, in that defensive department, too. Mm -hmm. Seal used here. They have a target. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Bobo Stream popping in the Primal Wrath here. They're able to sustain a little bit more. The Salmon Force has been used up here as well. And as you can see, the goal lead earlier, it was a 7k lead here by Guatemala. Slowly diminished to a 2k lead right now, right after those pickoffs and the Lord takedown there by Costa Rica. And this is where it gets really tricky when it comes to the late game nice. I'm pretty sure you've experienced this. Like just one fatal mistake when it comes to the late game can really turn the tides here for this game. And you can feel it here from Costa Rica. They were able to at least get in some tier 3 towers here, but I, I, they have to do so much more here. Like maybe perhaps wait for Guatemala to do in those dives, punish them. But right now, Guatemala setting up a death push here as well, right before the, the Lord is up. They can't afford any more mistakes. 16 minutes into the game, the Moskov is going to get activated as of the moment, right? Even though, despite the AL not really having a good time, 4-4, yep. this is the time to be able to clap back up against Guatemala. Yeah, Costa Rica, you know, they, they put the work in and their backs were against the wall for a moment. They almost lost the game for a moment, but... They have put in the time, put in the effort. They punished a mistake from Guatemala, and now they're possibly looking at a, a potential to turn mm -hmm. things around. They still have quite a bit of ways to go. Again, with only three turrets down, Guatemala waiting patiently for this. Again, they can play around the fact that Lord is going to be up here in about 30 seconds. And if they can get a pickoff, especially mm -hmm. uh, on, let's say, Ale or Lin, or even Zerail uh, to... to be a target like as long as they get the black shoes out even it's going to be great for them to go ahead and play around with so you know this is at a point where it's like again this is match point for both these teams obviously the loser here will not be able to go forward any longer the winner will have a have a chance i would say depending on how the rest of the, the games go here big yep. immortality is being yep. picked up by costa rica <laughs> so right now lords up and guatemala they have the the map advantage the positioning advantage uh -oh. Rios Mont should be fine. It's going to spawn out a couple, but also Danny used the conceal there, it looked like. Now they don't have that. Oh, uh Mobile -huh, Stream a little bit too early in. He gets bursted Ooh. down there by Zayth, and now they're going to go for more. The Immortality has been popped. Zirial, no time to pop what? in the black shoes, and that is what Guatemala was looking for. Mobile Stream. He was trying to get someone up, but the setup was just there. The burst was insane coming out from Zayth. D Danny? Gonna get the tug in here onto Rios mod, still able to escape that, but this should be Guatemala being able to take oh, it the Lord. Not unless, not unless there's a steal. Yep, he's already positioning himself there. Tempest of Flays has been used to uh, care of Rios mod, and now we see Cholo 97. Who's gonna oh. have to take the Lord? <laughs> it's gonna be Lin stealing the Lord away from the side of Guatemala. Numino Blast is here for Second Daddy as well, losing in the immortality and gets bursted down there by Zayt, but this should give. Costa Rica, some breeding space as well. Wait, wait, what's going on here? Lin? Lin? Oh, no. Down. Okay, he recalled way too far into enemy jungle. But you know what? Costa Rica has the Lord, but now they can't convert after those two takedowns. Oh, but they're going to clear this up yeah. really fast here. Again, they have great clear speed. And they might be able to run this one in. There's still yeah. 30 seconds for Lin to come up. Danny isn't available too. They hold on to this one tower in mid can at Costa Rica. Oh Round no! Members defend. Yeah, but it's gonna be Cholu 97 bursted down there, but it's gonna be Honeymoon going in for the petrifying rough waves. It's only Boba Stream left to defend the base, going for the onward. All the ultimates get thrown oh, down here. Boba Stream popping in the primal rat. Will be able to defend. It's gonna be Rio Smont down. He's what? still alive though. He's still alive. There are minions coming through as Danny gets in Honeymoon, but it's over. Guatemala says this can't extend any longer. We're going to be taking this last game as they take in the series 2-1. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't yep. the cleanest game for either yep, team. Yep. But Guatemala, they get it done. I could I could hear their comms at the end there. They were like, hit the base. Just lock on the tower. Lock on the base. Like, yep. th that's what they needed because mm -hmm. if they didn't, there was actually potential there for the minions to be cleared up. 
and for Costa Rica to stay in that possibly a little bit longer. Great effort though, I gotta say, you know, shout outs yeah. to, to Lynn there. Was able to swoop in and somehow get the Lord under that pressured moment. But unfortunately, like I said, this the clear speed that we had here for this lineup from Guatemala was just so good. We're gonna take a look at the highlights from this game. Again, amazing series. Great to have these three games um, unfold. And you know, Guatemala, they, they get game one, and then here in game three, they have a similar concept. Mm -hmm. A couple different heroes, but you know, they accomplish what they were set out to do. And it was scrappy, let's be honest. Yeah. Like they, they they really fought it out, and Costa Rica at one point yeah. was down quite a bit, but they still managed to really work to get back into this game. It's just Guatemala with a lot of their decision making continued to give them that lead and they worked around it. Yeah. I think it's also how you kind of deal with the pressure there for, for Costa Rica. They, they kind of had the game. Not gonna lie though, um, potential for the comeback, but unfortunately, you know, these tiny mistakes that you make, especially in the late game, right? The decision making has to be clean. And, yeah. you know, it was unfortunate that was the that was the case, right? And for Guatemala, they didn't want to extend it any longer. They the, the lore was stolen away from them for the last part. And eventually, you know, some wins, I would say, for Costa Rica. Uh, I like how the potential was there again for, for them to be able to take the game. But again, uh, decision-making-wise, it was Guatemala that was able to execute well in this entire game. And honestly, um, I thought it would have been like a reverse sweep from them. But yeah, Guatemala's going to be able to deny them that. Yeah, even this, you know, is a uh, good defense. Good to try to keep things together here. Costa Rica, you know, you got to give it up to them, making things work. But it's just, you know, at some point it was just too late. And Guatemala's lineup really allowed them to go ahead and, and end things. Again, this is where that moment's like, you can hear them saying, lock onto that, lock onto the base. We have a couple minions, you know, which is yep. just send it, just do it. And they finally get it. They end up winning the series here. Um, great, uh, great game three, just under 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you can see, you know, Lin, Lin did the work. He was doing a lot, honestly. And and coming from a place where they didn't have some the, the space they wanted to work around with this time around with the Ling like they did in game two. And, you know, it was a struggle. And maybe that change was the fact that just even for Forsaken Danny didn't get the Tigreal this time, yeah. you know, because the damage was there from Zeriel, but unfortunately it just didn't work and also that mobus serene going in for that initiation a little bit too early in that last lord mm -hmm. take might have been a pretty big punishment for them so guatemala really they you know like i said they didn't they didn't have a perfect game either but um both teams punished each other's yeah. mistakes uh this time around though guatemala just had enough of a lead and had enough mm -hmm. of a good clear speed lineup that when they got that advantage they were able to push through and i think a big part of this too again is this this julian pick like mm. cholo here how many times do we see him land those enhanced chains set things up for the team mm -hmm. and uh, it was great here but zayat will get that mvp definitely should because he was the one also pushing to win that game there at the end um once again on this harith just mm -hmm. massive game almost 100 000 damage 90 000 damage here yeah, 92 and 11 here it's so huge. just great performance well like what you say Big damn from Big Damn. <laughs> Big damn from from Zayt. I mean this is this has to be the most damage that we've seen all three games combined. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, the, I think the most was like perhaps like from Ailes uh Clint. I think that was like 50, 60 K, but this is ninety yeah. K that you're talking about. And you've seen it coming out from the basic attack of Zayt. And I think for, for Guatemala, not the cleanest one, but they were at least able to extend the game out, take in game number three. And uh, what a series that we had. Uncontemporary picks here and there. But overall, uh, really enjoyed this one. And definitely the potential is there for both these teams. Yeah, I, and I, you know, again, I don't know where this uh, exactly sets things for us. Um, but we'll have to look at the standings, of course. You guys mm -hmm. can also check them out in the chat. You can go to isf.gg to stay updated. Now, we are going to be moving to a short break, about six minutes before we get ready for the second match. So, Kim, I know Kim's going to go ahead and take a rest, mm -hmm. but we'll be back after this with Mirko. So sit tight. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> 